Hey guys, I'm Bill, and in this tutorial, we're gonna make a web crawler in Java. A web crawler just starts with a website, it searches for links inside that website, and it goes to those links, and it finds links in those websites too. And then, this cycle repeats until we've got a very large collection of a lot of websites on the, on the web. You can make this in any programming language, but in this tutorial we're going to make it in Java. To test our web crawler, we're going to use this page that I made right here. It's called Virtual Shop, and as you can see it has a lot of links in a lot of formats. And we're going to use this to test if our web crawler if our web crawler can see all the links inside this page and many others inside of this. You can download this page at my GitHub page, Java Web Crawler. You can download the testpage.zip file and if you unzip it you will see a directly called directory called test page. Inside test page, you'll find index.html, which is the page right here. I'll leave a link down in the description. And also, we need a library to crawl these pages. Because when we get the HTML of a web page, it's just pure HTML, it's just plain text. We need to extract information from those HTML plain text lines. To do that, we need to use a library called JSOUP. To get it, you search JSOUP, and you should see one called JSOUP.org. Click on that, and click on download. And inside here, you'll find a jar file. You can download that. And after you download it, which I already did, right here, you can add it to your Eclipse project by right-clicking on the project that you're working on and click on Properties. Inside there, you'll find Java Build Path and libraries. Inside here you need to click on add external jars. If your jar is inside the project then you can just click on add jars. We'll select JSOUP, hit OK and now it's inside there. We can apply and close and you can see that there's a new thing called re referenced libraries inside here and our jar file is inside here. To get started, I'm going to create a new a new package called main. All of our code is going to go into main. And then we're going to add a class called main. This is the class that we're going to run every time we want to test it. And so we need to add the main function inside of it. Every time Java runs a code, it will first run main. Now the structure of our new web crawler is going to be something like this. The main class is just a main file. We're going to run it every time we want to test it. And the bot class is going to be the actual web crawler that does all the job. So this is a main structure. Many other tools can be added later. So we're first going to make the backbone of a web crawler. You can create a class called bot inside main 
And here we go. First in the main class we can just create a new bot object to run it. And as I said earlier, a web crawler needs a starting point. It needs to start in a URL and then it can search for links inside that URL. We can define a variable called start oops start URL and we're gonna start our search here. We're gonna copy this page right here. You can copy it and paste it right here. And we can pass it to the bot through here. But it's giving us an error because we haven't defined the bot class yet. We need to define it, define the constructors and string start URL and we're done. Now the constructors are set. We can make it accessible by all classes, all functions and classes inside bot by making a variable right here. String start URL. And this dot start URL equals start URL. We can leave the main class alone for a while now. Today, we're going to focus on the bot start function. The start function is going to start the bot and start to crawl all of pages. In the start function, Today we're going to work on the part of the web crawler that gets HTML from a website, a URL. We can make another class, and we can make another function. We can set it to private because the main function, a uh, main class and main function don't need to access this function private string get HTML and we're gonna pass it in URL what we want to make this function do is it will take in a URL and then it will contact the server or in our case a local file and then it will get the HTML or the content of that URL. And in the start function, we can set string HTML equals get HTML this dot start URL because we need to first get the HTML content of the initial URL and we're getting an error oh the error is because we haven't returned anything even though we declared that we're gonna return a string first we can define first we can define an URL and it's having an error because we haven't imported it yet. We can click on that. And to make things easier, we can just import everything from java.net. Then, now we'll throw everything else inside a try and catch statement in case any error occurs. If any error occurs, We'll print stack, stack trace. We'll print stack trace. 
and return nothing because an error occurred. What we're gonna try is we're gonna first define you to new URL. We're creating a new URL object and we're sending and we're telling it to create a new URL object using this URL string. Then next, we need to create URL connection, I believe. And it says no it says no errors because we have already imported everything from java.net. Uh, java.net. Next we can set some headers. Set request headers a request property property. We can set the user agent. So that the crawled website knows what our user agent is. I'm gonna name this bot bbot 1.0, version 1.0. And also, I'm gonna set request property except char set. In case some other char set, uh, in case some char set that isn't including ASCII comes out, and then we're gonna create an input stream variable because we need to get the data after we connect get input stream input stream just lets the uh we will use input stream to get all the data that is sent by the server oops no just import it and we're going to change this to all to make things easier and now that we've created the input stream, we can read the input stream. I'm going to use buffered reader for this task. Reader equals new buffered reader. And I'm going to create a new input stream reader. And I'm going to pass in is input stream. And I'm going to create a variable for line. The line vari variable is just going to store every single line that we read from, from whatever page we're visiting. And the string HTML variable, we're gonna store the HTML that we've got from the server. You can make this a little bit more pretty by separating these lines. And while this is a while loop, we're gonna first store stores a line first inside the line variable and then we're going to check if it's equal to no if it's equal to no that means we have finished reading and it's time to move on to the next step this is just an easy way to elim eliminate some code now the line variable is stored with the current line. We can add the line to HTML. And, oops, 
The HTML needs to be initialized with an empty string. And then, before we continue, we can add a new line to make it prettier. And finally, we can return the HTML. I almost forgot another step. Before we return the HTML, we can trim. We can trim the HTML. Because some HTML documents ha have a lot of lines before it finally starts with an HTML tag. Like this. So we need to remove all of these before we can continue. Boost to look good and save some save some time for the computer. Now we finished the get HTML part of the code. Let's try printing it out. If we print it out right now. And before we can run it in the main class, we haven't started the bot yet. We need to start it. Start. And now if we run it, it shows the code that's behind this page. Because if we look at this page source, you can see that it's absolutely the same with what is displayed right here. So there was a lot to cover. Let's see what what the whole scene is about again. First, we create a bot object and we tell the bot where to start its search. And then we start the bot. At the bot part, when we call this, this line of code, it first stores the start URL, initial URL, to the variable this.startURL, which is this, so that it's accessible for all other classes, uh, all other functions. And when we start it, the HTML variable is stored with getHTML, which in turn returns the HTML. And what the getHTML function do is first it creates a new URL object, it opens a connection with the server, it sets some request properties. In this case, we set user agent to be bot version 1.0, and we set accept char set to UTF-8. These are basically just setting headers for the request. Then we're getting the input stream from the connection so that we can read the data. We create a reader, buffer reader, and we read it line by line. Each time we read a line, we store it inside line, this variable right here, and checks if it equals no. If it equals no, then we know that it should finish. It should stop reading any data because the data is at its end point. And if it doesn't, if it's not equal to no, then we add it to HTML, the variable right over here to this empty string. And also we add a new line so that it looks prettier. Then we trim the HTML to save some memory and also to make it look good. And finally we return an HTML, uh, the HTML string. If we catch any exception, we'll immediately return no and print out what was wrong. So there was a lot to cover in one episode. In the next tutorial, we're going to work on some other things essential to web crawlers, like processing any links inside the HTML document. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out my website, www.whatsyouridea.com. And if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.